Hi guys. Hey, what's up you guys? I'm here with the one and only <laughs> Louis Thomas. Um, um, and uh, we are meeting here in London. And um, a pleasure uh, seeing you, Thomas. I am so excited to be hanging out with Mark right now. This is, I've been meaning to do this for absolutely months, so it's a pleasure to be here with you in London as well. Amazing. Yes, it's really cool. And I don't do uh, interviews often, but with you I really want to do it because uh, you really, um, yeah, I really noticed you the past uh, year and a half, uh, 2017, you started uh, with your YouTube channel and, and I, I really like your, um, your way. I, you, you're, because there are a lot of new guys uh, that started crypto videos and, and some others have also had major success like you, eh? you have like 100,000 subscribers or something? Nearly, nearly there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 95. Wow, one, I think. wow. So that's very impressive because I've been making YouTube videos since 2013, I have like 5,000 subscribers so I'm like shocked to see how much success some of these guys uh, like you too also have but I'm, I'm sure it's well deserved uh, and um, and I'm very curious how you achieved that and how how you came up with that. Uh, but I just want to say first also that I really I really like uh, your content and I, I like to watch your content because you you uh, many many people they are just like always very positive about the markets and 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 it can only go up. Um, but you are uh, able to see different kind of perspectives and present them to your viewers and of course. You also presented my perspective, my bear perspective, and really helped my YouTube channel get a lot more attention. So thank you for that. Uh, yeah, well, really well, cool. Thank you so much for the kind words, Mark. And um, what I say is that I, from from day one, I've approached this very much as a student and as a, a learner, and I still very much am. I'm still so new. I mean, you've been in this space for years now. I only really started getting involved, especially with YouTube, early 2017. And I think one thing people have appreciated is that I haven't tried to come across as some kind of, of know-it-all. Uh, from day one, I've shared my journey, my, my general thoughts, my actions in the market. Uh, you know, sometimes it has been not so, has gone so well, I've been wrong, but other times it has done. And whenever I've made those calls and it has done pretty well, people have you know, gained attention from that. And I've also, I have treated it as a, as a business as well. And so it is a very much a daily effort, daily grind, you know, lots of hours put in. But uh, I found it the most amazing experience and one thing that's helped me so much as well is following the perspectives of people who, like yourself, have already been in the space so long. The best advice I would offer anyone getting into the space right now is just find the guys who offer good content, who've seen it all, been through it all before, and just learn. Just you know, shut up, don't worry so much about what you're thinking, just soak in all the amazing perspectives that people are offering for free here on YouTube. Yeah, so 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 your YouTube channel. Uh, when did you come up with the idea to start that? So I, I'm a kid of the internet. I've always loved YouTube for like just anything for absolutely years. I always kind of wanted to do one, and there was a period of time where even before crypto, I just talked about random stuff. Um, I talked about politics. People weren't interested in that, so that's why I didn't do too well. And it was just, yeah, I just made a couple of videos showing the fact that I was going into cryptocurrencies. I made a video talking about the fact I kind of dumped my whole life savings into cryptocurrencies at the time. And that actually blew up. That did really well. And ever since then, I just kind of fell into it without yeah. meaning to. And it's, it's just been amazing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and so, um, uh, was there someone, like, how did your videos get, got, got, got uh, noticed? Was it just YouTube that ranked you higher or was someone else that, uh, like, talked about your videos, do you remember that? So, when I was at university, I was studying for a law degree, but I didn't really like studying law. And so one of the things I fill the vast majority of my free time with was uh, kind of business and internet marketing, marketing in particular. And so I'd follow these guys, I don't know if you're familiar with Gary Vaynerchuk on YouTube. No. He's a kind of well-known you know, internet marketing guy. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And people like Pat Flynn from a website called Smart Passive Income, some of you might be aware. And I just took in everything that they had to say and applied all their lessons. Mm. And I took that with me into YouTube and even before YouTube as well. And to this day, I still do some kind of freelance digital marketing. And so I was able to use some of the skills that I learned from that and around content marketing and apply to cryptocurrency. And it did really well, fortunately, because there's so much demand mm -hmm. for this kind of content mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. So, so what, what, what are the important things if you want to build a successful YouTube channel? What do you need to pay attention to, uh, according to you? Uh, two things. People overcomplicate over, over it so much. Just consistency and trying to put out good content. People get so worked up about titles, tags, 
all these different strategies, all this different software to use. It is just a matter of being absolutely consistent because particularly with YouTube, a lot of these algorithms reward consistency. Mm. They they like the fact that they have consistent income from yeah. you know, you have to think from their perspective as well. Yeah. If someone just posts every couple of weeks, why would they bother promoting that person? Mm. And so just being consistent and just working on improving the the quality of the content and that doesn't mean necessarily focusing on camera, equipment, it's just the actual juice the actual content itself mm. you know in this space if you share great perspectives people will appreciate that and they'll keep coming back mm. for more and more and more mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and when you say consistency do you mean like every day a video or every week a video or every two days a video is that what you mean or what do you mean with consistency as often as you possibly can mm -hmm. i mean ideally you know daily would be best um but you just do as much as you possibly can mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I have, I have the impression that really makes a big difference eh, in how often you post videos. Yeah, that's and and you know, people think this is a walk in the park and that this isn't a serious job. You know, I've got that a lot myself. But uh, content creation is an insane amount of work. Mm -hmm. You have to prepare, plan beforehand. You have to actually make it. The editing takes hours upon hours and you have to promote it as well. So mm -hmm. it's, it's not an easy thing. It's definitely a skill and it's definitely a hustle, a grind. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, uh, I'm sure of that. Uh, it is. Uh, yeah, that's really cool. So, um, let me think if I want to ask anything more about this. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it's, it's just a remarkable. 100,000 viewers, all, almost subscribers. Eh? And, and, uh, and I can imagine if you count... Uh, uh, like how many people are watching right now, uh, basically 24 hours, uh, seven days a week, your videos, it must be a ton of people. Eh? It's, it's not as many now as it was back in December. December was crazy. I, I made one video talking about my top three cryptocurrencies for 2018. And within weeks, I got something like a million views, which I can only dream yes. of having right now. Wow, but yeah, wow. who knows? Yeah. Maybe if we get into another bubble all over again, those views might come out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and has your subscriber count gone down uh, due, due to the bear market in crypto or not really? I, the, the subscriber count hasn't gone down, but the amount of new subscribers per day and the amount of views has absolutely plummeted. Mm. And I've, I've looked around, it happens across the board for yep. virtual cryptocurrency creators. Uh, it's just very, very much correlated with the market. The, the better mm -hmm. the market's doing, higher prices, people search on YouTube for it. And, it, and it's the reverse for the bear market as well. People yeah. you know, sell, walk away, and they, they don't want to hear about it ever again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and I can also imagine like the amount of subscribers, it's hard, harder to go down because people, when they're not watching anymore, they're still subscribers, so you can probably better measure it by how many, I don't know, how, how do you measure that, uh, the popularity of your channel, uh, like how do you do that, what do, what, what do you look at? I, I think growth is always important. I think just seeing how many people, like day by day, you know, how many people are subscribing. Um, you're, you're right, people don't tend to unsubscribe so much. And so it is just a matter of keeping the attention of people who are watching and just putting out new content, getting as many new subscribers as possible. Because the more subscribers, I mean, this is my job, so more subscribers, more views, more income, ultimately. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And how's that been going? Because income plummeted also on YouTube due to change in advertising uh, programs. Uh, have you been uh, suffering that also? Or? YouTube is a nightmare, right? Ah. Like if, if you're depending on it for a full-time income, you have to deal with algorithm changes. I've had immense demonetization from my videos. You can go back and watch every single video I've ever made. I've never so much as sworn, never a single ah. cuss word. And yet I've had dozens upon dozens of videos demonetized. My most recent one about Parabolic Trav, demonetized. Oh, and so that's one. Why? Well, it just you're happens. not given an explanation. Uh -huh. And so, yeah, it's a pain. And, and yeah. you're forced to pursue other revenues of income. Yes. Steam it has been huge for me. Steam yeah. it has been a life support. Wow. Like, really, really good. Wow. DTube as well, yeah. But Steam it is it's just you make a blog post about your video, that's it. Or is there anything else there? Yeah, uh, and with DTube, you, you upload the video file of itself and kind of promote it there. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are people who work for it. And yeah, it managed to do pretty well. Especially with the value of the, the Steam dollar. So the yeah. higher the Steam dollar is, the more income you get to generate. Yeah. So because people upvote your blog post about your YouTube video on Steamit, uh, you get paid that way. Huh? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And and one thing that's really really cool as well is the uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the basic attention token, but uh, I'm actually a publisher on that, and it really does work, and oh. it really does make an increasing difference. 
for content creators. So you, it's like Steemit, you publish your, your, your video also on that uh, website? or No, no, it's just on YouTube. And the people who have the, the, the browser, the Brave browser, wow. they, they put their you know, bat tokens on there and I guess kind of distribute it among their, their favorite creators. Hmm. Mm. So, 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 how does it work exactly? Uh, could you explain that? I'm sorry, but I, I heard you mention about it before. Basically, yeah. So it's, it's no real effort on the on the content creator side. They pretty much just sign up um, as a as a publisher, and then it's all just a matter of the the other person, the viewer, having basic attention tokens and choosing to distribute it to their creators. And the eventual plan with the Brave browser is that when you consume adverts, you'll get paid in basic attention tokens. Mm -hmm. that, that, that will then be redistributed to mm. content creators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I have to study it a little bit more. But so basically, the people that watch your videos, some of these have these basic bad tokens, and they vote on you, and you that's how you get also paid some bad tokens. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and I haven't really looked into that project as an investment mm. or speculation of any sort. But just in terms of the way it works as intended, it really does. Wow. Whether it's a good investment, I yeah. don't know. I haven't studied it. Yeah. But yeah, it really does work, which is amazing. Yeah, ah, see, it is. Uh, and 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 the DTube, you upload your videos there, and 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 you get paid from that also. Yeah, so that's that's like a decentralized YouTube operating on the Steam blockchain. So you get paid in Steam again. Um, ah, you you get paid in Steam. Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 okay. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, I think that's very important for, for YouTube creators to really diversify because YouTube is really acting like a monopolist and they can, of course. I mean, it's our own fault. <laughs> we all like uh, easy solutions, but uh, the, the consequences, of course, and, and lots of easy exposure, but uh, the consequences that you get the monopolist is really like I yeah, can dictate the rules a little bit too much now, huh? Yeah they, yeah, they really need to watch out. Again, I don't mean to kind of shell steam it or anything, mm -hmm. but uh, over the past few weeks, you've had these very, very large YouTubers now who are just mm -hmm. moving a lot of content onto steam it. You've had mm -hmm. Furious Pete, mm -hmm. the Hodge Twins. I don't know if you're familiar with them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, YouTube really need to watch out because mm -hmm. steam it is only getting bigger. Steam it is getting, approaching a million users mm -hmm. and that can quickly escalate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you also interested in these, like, does that uh, attract you to invest also? Also in these projects like Steam it and Bat uh, tokens. So, so again, with, with Bat, I'm not so sure because I don't understand quite the the investment side of it. Um, but yeah, sure. With, with with Steam, part of the reason why, I, I whenever I earn Steam, I keep a certain amount in the form of Steam mm -hmm. power. Mm -hmm. And the reason I do so is because of the way that the social media platform works. It does a really good job. There's a lot of engagement. There's a lot of posts on there and you can kind of follow the daily growth in users and it looks like it's a, a developing, you know, it's having some kind of network effect now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, wow, wow, wow. Uh, that's like real adoption uh, of cryptocurrency. It's, it's yeah? absolutely real yeah, and I yeah. think Steam, the Steam blockchain actually has more transactions than any other cryptocurrency as well. Yeah, yeah. And what do you think of the critique? Like they say that there is a lot of uh, negative uh, energy going on on the Steam platform and there are some whales that basically because they have so much steam, they, they basically decide who gets the who gets paid and who not. Is that true? These these allegations are not really. There's definitely issues with whale voting. Um, they they take a huge amount of the rewards out of the pool, and if you're favoured or not favoured by a whale, that makes a huge difference. Um, going back to like December, if a whale had voted one of my votes, I could have made several thousand dollars just from a single post, which is kind of crazy to wrap your head around mm -hmm. uh, and I think that the problem with Steam as a whole is that it's so complicated the actual construction of the blockchain yeah. like three different cryptocurrencies as a part yeah. of it. it it is immensely complicated yes. and to this day even though I use it again as an investment I still don't feel like I completely understand it to yeah. be quite honest with you yeah yeah so uh, about crypto you did really well uh, choosing uh, ethereum quite early huh? uh, when did you start investing in ethereum <laughs> right so confession time uh, <laughs> with ethereum that was kind of down to luck to some degree i was on coinbase back then it was only bitcoin and ethereum mm. i bought some bitcoin i had a bit of money left over and i thought huh let's just put it on this this thing here that's like really really cheap compared to Bitcoin like the most newbie move and that turned out to be the single best investment I've ever made in my life so just one of those things so I managed to get some at around about ten dollars which is pretty good pretty good price compared to today and uh, yeah I actually consciously chose to invest in Ethereum later on at around about 35 pounds 40 dollars 
Yeah, yeah, and I was very courageous because it already had gone up a lot. Eh? But still, like you were aware of that. But still, you you decide, okay, this is a good project. And I'm really going to invest uh, big into it, basically, eh? for your own portfolio. Eh? It paid off, and, yeah. and I think to some degree, my inexperience and my naivety did pay off to some degree. I think if I knew then what I knew now, I would have been a lot more careful yeah. investing in it after such growth. Oh, but yeah. uh, back then I was just so hopeful. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. like still, I was still so captivated and blown away by the videos I'd recently seen by the likes of Andreas Antonopoulos. Yeah. I was sure that this was the future and so I just wanted to put as much money in it as soon as possible, almost yeah. regardless of, of the context of the price. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but 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 I wouldn't like downplay it too much. Like uh, coming into a, uh, having an open mind uh, uh, is actually a very valuable thing to have, and it's the problem with all people that have had some success. Then with me, in case with Bitcoin, you start to attach yourself to it, and you stop having an open mind to other projects because basically, yeah, you have too much invested in, in in this project, and you know that it's competition. So yeah, you close your mind a little, and and. And instead of looking for the good things, you're looking for the bad things uh, in the competitors. And there's always bad things to find, of course. Uh, I, I couldn't agree more. That, yeah. That's my problem with Ethereum, if I'm being honest. You know, I love Bitcoin, but Ethereum is my darling. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people point out that um, I need to like, watch out for EOS and these other kind of competitors that are coming up. Mm -hmm. And so that's something I try to be mindful of. I do try and, and you know, have an open mind to it. Mm -hmm. But still, at the moment, I'm still bullish on Ethereum's prospects long term. Yeah. Whether I'm right or wrong, time yeah. will tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. I had someone uh, yesterday uh, talking about EOS um, uh, uh, and saying how uh, Ethereum will uh, fail to scale uh, and uh, EOS will take the market. <laughs> I'm not bought yet on that. I'm not bought yet, but you never know. You never know. <laughs> well, for me, it's easy to say I'm not invested in either, uh, <laughs> but uh, maybe that will change. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you have spoken uh, fairly. Yeah. You, you've said that you think Ethereum might be the number one in market cap quite soon. Yes, 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 yes. And the guy from yesterday thought that too. So uh, that that's, I think, uh, quite very likely. That'd be great for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'd be all right with that. Yeah, yeah. And I hope, I hope to pick up some Ethereum. After Bitcoin Cash a second, I want to buy some Ethereum and I have some orders open. Uh, I hope they get filled uh, because yeah, I, I really uh, uh, am very impressed with what they achieved and, uh, and, and that's really cool. Um, so, what's, what's your opinion on, 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 on... Do you see certain projects that, that, that are not highly valid or not highly ranked in, in the market, coin market cap? and? and that you do see potential in that you invest in? I, I think this is my problem now as a content creator um, compared to just when I was an investor before. I'm bombarded almost daily with all these people like throwing projects yes. and ICOs at me. And so I feel like I put a, a big wall. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately, I do think I'm quite close-minded to mm -hmm. any potentially amazing projects out there. Mm -hmm. But it's just so hard. Like, what can you do? There's thousands of cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. at this point. All of them have marketing departments and they're trying to sell mm -hmm. themselves to you. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's just, listening to the perspectives of people who I respect in the space again, so like people like yourself, uh, Cedric Dahl or whatever, mm -hmm. and if one of you guys mm -hmm. happen to be really interested mm -hmm. in cryptocurrency and I know there's no misaligned motives there, no kind of profit incentive, mm -hmm. then I'll be interested. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'm more than happy at this point to sit on the, the cryptocurrencies that I'm on already, mainly mm -hmm. Bitcoin and mm -hmm. uh, Ethereum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I have the same uh, people. Oh, you should check out this and check out this. And, and I don't do any research, like zero, nada. But if they, if it's like mentioned 30 times, they okay. I start to get <laughs> to know the name better. But yeah. that's what about it. So, so it's 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 uh, yeah. It's it's uh, it's also yeah. When you enter a market, you really research a lot. But then you take your picks and you stick to it. Uh, that's how it goes. Huh? Um, but yeah, uh, I think uh, for myself, it's really a chance if the bear market happens to really not invest in the same project, but really like make a big effort to see my new investments go to the younger generation eh, or people that really do that research into these projects. Uh, to, to uh, I hope I, I can succeed in, in, in diversifying my investment sums uh, because, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Bitcoin Cash and Ethereum, uh, sorry, uh, Bitcoin Cash and uh, and uh, the other project Byteball, uh, in the next bubble will be uh, not uh, will be an old project, just like Bitcoin was an old project and Ethereum was a new project in this bubble. Eh? Uh, the next bubble, well, uh, Bitcoin Cash is already an old project and uh, and Byteball too, and so some of these can of course it's not because it's all not going to succeed, but the major gains will not be there. Of course, they will be in in new projects that are starting today. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah, and I have to say, even though I don't really speak about Bitcoin Cash too much mm -hmm. or too favorably, um, I've never sold it, and so I think that does say something. I'm skeptical somewhat, but still, I, I'm open-minded to the fact that it could potentially do really, really well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you still have, again, if you knock uh, Roger Veer or whatever, he's you, you can't knock his passion or his evangelism and his marketing skills. And with a lot of these guys, with a lot of people in Bitcoin Cash, I don't feel confident enough to completely rule them out just yet, mm -hmm. I have to say. And uh, Byteball's a really interesting one as well. I feel like it never really caught the same amount of hype compared to, to other cryptocurrencies in the previous cycle. I do think a large part of that is the psychology of, of being an expensive coin when you look at the initial price of one. But uh, I think sooner or later, like potentially just like most other cryptocurrencies, have some kind of spark for some kind of major hype belt. And I think it has the potential to do really well mm -hmm. because it hasn't had such a huge run up before. Mm -hmm. If you see what I mean. Yes, 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 yes. Were there any other things that you liked about Byteball project uh, that inspired you to invest? Yeah, so, you know, I'll be completely honest. A large part of why was simply because of you, again, people I respect and I admire. We don't have to agree about everything. You're much more bullish on Bitcoin Cash than I am. But um, once you got me to look into it, I like the fact that with many of the cryptocurrencies, especially ones I'm invested in, there's some kind of like grand vision and there's a lot of, um, you still have to hope that a lot of it gets done successfully. So with Ethereum, you have to hope that it scales. You have to hope that sharding and Casper and everything works. With Byteball, I like the fact that there's a lot working right now and there's a lot of features you can do with it right now. The wallet is beautiful. It's really, really intuitive. I like the fact that you use all this kind of P2P dimensions to it, the betting, the insurance, the fact that you can um, send to like emails, phone numbers, just a lot of features that actually work right now. And it's a real joy to have a feature rich cryptocurrency that doesn't depend on some grand vision several years away. Yeah, 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 it's great to hear. And, 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 and um, wow, wow, you, yeah, you really uh, looked at it. Eh? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I did invest in it, so you know, yeah, you, you yeah. hope that I did do a bit of research. Yeah, to say that's, the least. Cool. that's really cool, that's really cool. <laughs> Yeah, I like that also very much uh, that it's there and it can be used. Um, yeah, that's the problem with IOTA as well. I mean, yeah. people compare IOTA and Bitcoin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even though I I have more money invested in IOTA, yeah. um, there's still so many unknowns. And the, the wallet, you know, being completely honest, sucks. It has sucked all this time. Yeah. Hopefully, Trinity Wallet will address that. Yeah. And we don't know what Q is at this point completely. Something to do with Cubic, maybe. Yeah. But there's still so many unknowns with IOTA, which can be a source of frustration. Mm -hmm. As someone who doesn't want to, you know, I want to be an investor, not just a, a gambler per se. Mm -hmm. So that's a really nice thing about Bikeball for me. Yeah, yeah. And how is it going with IOTA? Uh, so, so what are your uh, big uh, biggest investments? Ethereum and then IOTA? Uh, like very, very, very much so. So yeah. like Bitcoin. Ethereum theorem of a great bulk. Everything else in my mind is an experiment of sorts. Mm -hmm. And so with IOTA, I've made some pretty good profits. I got in there, I managed to buy the bulk of mine at about 20 cents. So I've made pretty good gains from that. Mm -hmm. uh, I really like the fact that they go for industry adoption yeah. and they're getting these big names now, Fujitsu, uh, Volkswagen, Bosch. I really like that approach. And so I'm interested to see you know, the way that things go. They've, they've tended to target themselves at industry players rather than simply retail investors, which cryptocurrencies like Tron have done, for instance. Yes, you know. yes, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. And you see, every project has, has a really major strength. And for IOTA, the networking they do in the industry is just amazing. Uh, wow. They did that uh, so well. Uh, and I, I think Ethereum also did extremely well when it comes to networking. I always underestimated that, but they really did that very well also. Uh, and onboarding so many so many uh, developers uh, uh, building on top of Ethereum, uh, they did that very well, that's right. Eh? And, and that's the number one reason why I favor Ethereum versus mm -hmm. all these other mm -hmm. platform cryptocurrencies. You know, if you look, just look at the sheer number of developers mm -hmm. for that versus any other contender you, you try and name, mm -hmm. it, it's not even close. And that's why even though Bitcoin maximalists talk about, you know, Rootstock might eventually render Ethereum useless, if they manage to just retain that same number of developers, then I think Ethereum's future is secure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but it's already there. Like so many people are building decentralized apps on top of Ethereum. So is the so the guy I met yesterday said like yeah, but it's not going. These decentralized decentralized apps are not going to be able to run on Ethereum. It's already maxed out today, and it's not even used. Uh, so so is that true? And and. 
Probably is, but again, that's, that's just why it's so important that Ethereum implements these scaling solutions. Mm -hmm. Once you have the likes of Plasma, Sharding, mm -hmm. Casper, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully it will have that capacity, especially with Plasma, just so much immense kind of off-chain scaling abilities there. I'm not concerned. I really, I'm really, it, it just depends on whether you have faith in that team to be able to implement what they do. And if you look at the likes of Vitalik Buterin, for me, there's not a single person I'm more bullish about in this space. Yes. He's, him and I are about a month or two apart, which is just crazy for me. Yes. But he's amazing. Yes, uh, it's, it's really a genius. Um, yeah, so um, you studied law, right? you have a law degree, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then you become a YouTuber. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's an odd so mix. How, 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 how much were your parents disappointed in your life decisions? <laughs> oh, you can imagine. <laughs> there was my mum thinking her son was going to be a hotshot lawyer in the city. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I say I'm going to invest in this Ponzi scheme in her eyes. <laughs> you know, she thought she completely, <laughs> like completely fallen off. But um, it's worked out quite well. And I think it's just the way the world's going. No, I really do. Yeah. It, my advice to anyone who's kind of 18, 17 years old, don't know what to do with their lives. If in doubt, forget university. Go study, you know, solidity. Go study how to write smart contracts. Yeah. That's where the money is, the opportunities are. Having been to university myself, I can't honestly say that I'd recommend it to other people unless you know for sure you want to be a doctor or, or something along those lines. Yeah. So what uh, drove you to do get your law degree? Like what, uh, what, what, what motivated you to, to do that? It's just all the standard stuff, really. You know, law is kind of a socially accepted, socially respected. There's a certain money status. I didn't really know what else to do, so I just kind of stumbled into it. It was only at university that it really occurred to me, like, wow, I really don't want to do this. What on earth am I going to do in my life? And uh, you know, fortunately, almost kind of miraculously, I found and fell in love with cryptocurrency. So it's just one of those things that I'm very, very grateful for. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, uh, that's that's very interesting. Um, I'm thinking if I want to ask something else because um, <laughs> I had some more questions. So, so yeah, um, your political views were also very interesting. <laughs> uh, so, uh, at one point on your YouTube channel, you shared your uh, 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 political opinions, which are more socialist uh, or left, yeah, or yeah. how do you call it? Uh? Yeah. And and um, and, uh, and, uh, and 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 of course, a lot of people say, "Oh my God!" <laughs> in the, because in the crypto community, yeah. a lot of best, right, uh? best advice for any like aspiring cryptocurrency YouTubers out there: if you have left-wing opinions, <laughs> don't voice them. <laughs> the free market has spoken, and they're not in what I have to say, which is fine. Yeah. Now, I, I, people aren't forced to watch anything if they don't want to hear some lefty Kirk in their eyes. They <laughs> uh, talk about cryptocurrencies. That's absolutely fine. But yeah, even yeah. though I don't talk about it so much, I'm still uh, it still informs my beliefs and outlooks on the world. For sure, yeah. uh, I'm not ashamed to admit that. Yeah, yeah. So, so you mentioned that you believe in automation, and, and that's why you also believe in a basic income. Can you tell a little bit more about that? Absolutely. So if you look around, you look at all these studies, Oxford University did one, I think within the next 20 years, up to 50% of all jobs are going to be gone to, to robots. Uh, if you just think of all the truck drivers, taxi drivers out there, virtually m well, most kind of blue-collar jobs, and even you know white-collar ones as well, completely gone. And so... You know, we need to figure out what to do about that. And some people, the kind of free market types, would say this always happens, new jobs will be created. But I'm not so sure. I think we are approaching this, if you want to call it a singularity, you know, the tech guys are calling it. I think once you get to the point where robots themselves are able to repair themselves, build themselves, I think we're going to see something we've never witnessed before. And to me, as a bit of a lefty, my instinct is to think that some kind of universal basic income would be the answer for that. And I think it can kind of speak to uh, lazy fair capitalists as well because ultimately if we want people to have the money to buy goods and services they're gonna have to get that money from somewhere and if they're not gonna get it from a job where's it gonna come from that's that's how I see it anyway yeah, yeah. And, and so how are taxes for you <laughs> well, that's interesting um, so I just got done actually <laughs> with all my records like I have a rough idea on my mind of how much tax I'm gonna have to pay from last year <laughs> and it's gonna hurt it's gonna yeah. hurt a lot when I pay it but I'm reluctantly happy, I guess you'd call it, to, yeah. to pay. Yeah. It's rough. Like no one, no one likes paying taxes. It doesn't matter how how lefty you are or whatever. It always sucks. Yeah. But to me, it's worth it. To some people, such as yourself, it's not, and it's theft. Yeah. 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 I guess in your eyes. So, so you, when you pay the tax, uh, you feel like okay, it sucks, but I do support the system, and I'm I, I'm happy. Certain things get paid thanks to my taxes. Absolutely. 
We're in the UK, and here at the NHS, our universal healthcare system is a national treasure. It's um, saved the lives of people that I know. I've used it plenty of times. I think it's an absolute godsend. And I, I think it works quite well. Um, if you look at the kind of cost of UK healthcare compared to, say, the USA, which has a bit more of a, a free market model, even though it is broken in some ways, the care is cheaper. It's sometimes considered more effective as well. And so I do think, um, you know, I'm not massively bullish about the state per se. I, I'm not pro big government. It's more that I just want the little guys. I want people to have access to good services, good healthcare, good education, regardless of the amount of wealth they have. That, that's what's important to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, um, I understand your your view, uh, and um, yeah. It's not my view. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the view of the vast majority, like 99% of people in the space. I'm, I'm fine. If you want to disagree with me, I'm fine. You know, I welcome debate, I welcome discussion. It's, it's sad to see how polarized a lot of discussion has been. People can't be civil to each other anymore. Uh, and it's quite nice because I think people have these ideas of lefties as being increasingly uh, intolerant these days. I want to try and deal with that somewhat by showing that I'm more than happy to have a discussion with anyone. You know, I'm not going to force anyone to use any gender pronouns or anything. Like, that's not what I think about. I think about money, power, wealth, how that's distributed in a society. I don't concern myself about other issues so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, uh, it's a very difficult uh, topic, uh, and it's a, it's a, it's indeed for me too. Um, it's emotionally uh, a heavy topic. Uh, it often makes me angry, uh, especially yeah. online. If you share your opinions online, you, you're always going to get hate, regardless of what you say, yeah. and it does weigh you down. And that's why on my channel, you'll see that even though I used to talk about stuff all the time, it pretty much never comes up in conversation anymore. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, maybe I can ask a little bit more about uh, so crypto and, 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 and the bull market. So, you're positive, eh? you really think it's going to go back up? My, I'm more than happy to be wrong. You know, I, I'm happy to admit the fact that I'm not very, very confident in my beliefs. I'm kind of 60, 40, something like that. The way I look at it, looking at the charts, and I, I do pay some attention to technical, anal uh, technical analysis. I know that some people think it's kind of mumbo jumbo, whatever. For me, it seems like I can't help but feel like we're in a, a double bubble and what we saw with kind of April 2013 to the end of 2013, we might see some kind of repetition this year. Um, to me, I think when you get the hype of the potential of a Bitcoin ETF, even though again, I know you said people have been speaking about it for years, and with some potential kind of institutional investment or at least with this NASDAQ trading desk and stuff, I think the price could be driven a lot higher in the short term before we see an eventual sustained bear market, which I think will be inevitable at that point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's possible that we get another leg up uh, and then it goes in. Just like we had it in 2017, it was basically two big legs up eh? uh, and, and, and we could have another one. Uh, it's true. I, I, the one thing about December, I don't think I don't think the market ran out of steam naturally. I think it was partly to do with the fact that the exchanges become completely buckled under pressure and they had to kind of hold registrations. I think this price could have gone up quite a bit further from there. And so that's why in my mind, there's still potential for a lot of buying demand from people who wanted to get in at an earlier time, but couldn't do so, if you see what I yeah. mean. Yeah, but did, did people not decide not to buy because they couldn't open an account as uh, Polonix? Uh, did, do you know people that then decided not to buy because they could open an account, of course, at the smaller exchanges? So I'm guessing many people did ended up doing that. But is that true or not? Because I, I do know some people personally, and again, this is what always happens. Um, I was telling my friends all the time about cryptocurrency back when I got in, saying, hey guys, you should join me, not interested. Yep. But then come December 2017, when price is way, way, way all time high, that's when they finally decided they wanted to hop on board. And I know some of them did try setting up a account with Coinbase and couldn't do so. And so I don't think they ultimately did buy. And so that's why I'm still, from my you know personal anecdotes, yeah. I still think there is some buy and demand there, yeah. and people are just looking for permission to get back on board. Yeah. So I think if there's some kind of like bullish momentum, yeah. we might get one final big, big, big Lego. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I'm more than happy to admit that that could just be my wishful thinking, yeah. and it could be a bear market right now. No, yeah, but I, that's a good argument. Uh, I find like uh, these people they lose interest when it goes down, right? so they lost some interest. But when it goes up now, wow. They're gonna start buying at the price they wanted to buy before, which would be done 15,000 or so. Eh? Uh, uh, but that actually could push it into a new all-time high. That's, that's a good argument. 
And I think another very good argument for a new bull market is that the correction of 70% was uh, already more than enough uh, considering how high it only went. It's a pretty yeah. significant amount. And, and one yeah. thing yeah, I've yeah. been pondering in my mind, and I'd be interested to hear your perspective mm -hmm. on this, or whether it's, it's just naive on my part, I wonder whether the market is getting a little bit more smart um, in the sense that with every crash, we know from experience in history, there's eventually going to be a lag up. People just, you know, they understand that the hodling mindset, yep. which is preached all over Twitter and YouTube. Yep. So I wonder whether the market really has grasped that somewhat mm -hmm. and that there aren't so many paddock sellers. I don't know whether that's the case or whether it'll always apply mm -hmm. because it's just humans are not sophisticated mm -hmm. investors and, and they are susceptible to FUD and stuff. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think about that? Do you think the market could get smarter over time in that sense? It's, well, yeah, you have to be careful for that, uh, that that's the danger, yeah. uh, that uh, just on average become smarter and they are ahead of you because in many ways it's, it's, it's a game eh, of, of being the smartest uh, of the bunch will make the most money, uh, but the market is getting smarter too. So um, I think that's very true. Uh, and, uh, and what's also interesting about cryptocurrency markets is the cycles are so much faster than the traditional markets. Traditional markets is a cycle like every 10 or 20 years. Here it's, it's 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 like every three years or two years, so so that's just crazy. Eh? Uh, ten times faster cycle, so you do learn a lot faster. Also, then, um, but but I would think that 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 uh, actually the amount of new people has been tremendous again uh, in the market. Uh, this it was bubble in 2017. Uh, I would estimate that 90 percent uh, the, the the market then folded in amount of people. Eh? Uh, in 16 and 17 and so that's 90% new people most of which have no experience in investing right? yeah. most are young people but most, yeah. most of the millennials yeah. who've never yeah. invested in any yeah. kind of stocks or anything I've yeah. never really done that much before I did do a little bit but uh, yeah most people this is their first investment yeah yeah sure. yeah yeah so so I think that the same pattern will repeat because of that yeah. right? because uh, they are new investors, so they, they, they still have to go to these through these first lessons uh, that uh, well markets uh, yeah do change uh, in 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 in, um, in mental state dramatically, and they don't know that yet. But but the yeah. counter to that potentially is that most of the bitcoins are held in the hands of the richer, more sophisticated investors, and so maybe panic among the new guys with very relatively little mm -hmm. may not have such an impact potentially yeah you're right that's a good argument i don't have a counter to that <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> that's true that's true yeah but, yeah, but, yeah. You know, yeah, you know, yeah this is still a learning thing for everyone isn't it yeah, yeah. and what's cool for me is that even though you're one of the most renowned peers in the space you know even people like you i don't think i've heard anyone actually be dismissive of cryptocurrency as a whole no one said this is the end mm -hmm. it is just the worst case scenario is several years maybe that's it yeah 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 that's true that's true yeah you have such people eh, that still say today that crypto will fail but they are not even they are not Peter taken <laughs> yeah they are not taken serious uh, anymore no uh, it's a little bit ridiculous at they, they're point. the same people who said that the internet is yeah. not gonna go anywhere yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true, that's true. Um, but the adoption, I think, is very, very interesting and very important. It's interesting uh, that we talked about Steemit and this uh, bad token. Just from uh, experience in adop adop adopting certain cryptos that are actually useful. Uh, yeah, it's that's it's really got great. real utility. Yeah. You know, that's the amazing thing. People wonder about mm -hmm. whether or not cryptocurrencies are here to stay, whether it's a fad. You know, I can speak from personal experience that there are these projects now which are becoming an essential part of my life. You know, yep. again, using the likes of Steemit, BAT, Fat Token, mm -hmm. that enables me to make a living. I actually do depend on that, which is, is amazing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is still, you know, just a couple of years old. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so what, what convinces you about Bitcoin versus Bitcoin Cash? Uh, like, what, what, what convinces you that Bitcoin is still a good choice? Uh, and and, and it has still the potential to really uh, win the market or continue to win them or win the market back. Uh... So I, I'm more than happy to admit that I'm not a, a technical expert when it comes to understanding and, you know the science behind it. My degree was in law, not computer science. And so for me, it is just trusting some of the experts, the people I very much believe in. I think for me, the, the number one guy is Andreas Antonopoulos. Mm -hmm. He did favor the, the BTC side mm -hmm. rather than BCH. Mm -hmm. And I think understanding the arguments both sides have made, I buy more into the vision of BTC using off-chain to scale. Uh, I do have those concerns mm -hmm. around 
possible centralization with a lot of the, the on-chain scaling. Uh, you know, I, I do understand some of the arguments made, I think Moore's Law, is that what it's called, when tech becomes a yeah. lot cheaper, you know, with the storage space mm -hmm. and stuff, potentially, you know, but for me, I'm just more sold by the, the off-chain scaling argument, personally. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah? But uh, I'm not running out Bitcoin Cash at all, yeah. you know, who knows, which is why I hold both. Yes, well, yeah, you're more uh, hedging your bets there than I do. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't have any Bitcoin anymore. Zero? No, no, zero, yeah. But um, uh, that's interesting. Actually, from the start of Bitcoin, there were people that said that that, that, that actually it's not going to be able to chill on scale and it will have to find solutions to scale off chain. Yeah. So, so that, that I mean, there's certainly a strong uh, argument for that case. It'll, it'll depend. We'll see with Lightning Network now just how much it gets adopted, whether people mm -hmm. really will use it. It looks encouraging so far, but it is early days. Um, what I really, really love about cryptocurrencies, um, compared to other fields of study where people just argue all day, and you know, like philosophy, no one's ever actually mm -hmm. right. With cryptocurrencies, people are going to be proven right or wrong in time. Mm -hmm. It's an inevitability. They're going to be right and they're going to be wrong. Mm -hmm. And you just have to try and figure out which side is, is the right one and hedge your money accordingly to try and make some profits. But yeah, this Bitcoin Cash BTC debate will be one. So I think. I can't personally see both being very, very successful in the future. Mm -hmm. I think eventually one is going to destroy the other, but it'll be mm -hmm. too dramatic. Mm -hmm. For me personally, I think that's BTC, but I really don't know. Yeah, that's very interesting. As you said, and I agree with that. There is no room in the market in the long term for two projects that are so close to each other. Um, I agree with that. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do think. Uh, Bitcoin Cash is a very good chance to, to, to win there. Um, Price-wise, it's still the same value as it started about 10% of Bitcoin, so it hasn't changed on that level. But in amount of transactions on chain, of course, it changed a lot. Uh, Bitcoin uh, I flattened out, uh, couldn't go up anymore in on-chain transactions and actually collapsed a lot now, uh, whereas Bitcoin Cash has continued to go up, up, up. So, so uh, but also in, 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 in more merchant uh, adoption is my impression that really uh, Bitcoin Cash is taking over the, the market of Bitcoin. Uh, so, so I think this is uh, a very um, strong case. Like, I, 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 of course, there's a lot of idealism also behind it. Um, but yeah, um, I think that's worth commenting on as well. I have to say yeah. that's another thing that puts yeah. me off Bitcoin Cash. Yeah. Uh, it very much seems like the anarcho-capitalist coin, if you will. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of those kind of conferences are very much ANCAP yeah. themed and based. I know Roger Bear is, is an advocate yeah. for yeah. that. Yeah. And so again, that's another kind of vision that I don't necessarily buy into yeah. so much. Yeah. Uh, I think that does have some some mild impact. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. It plays, it plays. And actually the mass market is... is is not anarcho capitalist, it's much more socialistic uh, uh, thinking or left uh, wing thinking. So, and in the end, the value of a coin will depend on the adoption. And, yeah. and the adoption, uh, well, uh, most people don't think like anarcho capitalist. So, so it's true. From that perspective, actually, Bitcoin will win. Um, but, uh, but I think another very important argument here is that actually people care much more about the price than about the ideo ideology behind a, a company CEO or... or uh, oh, of course, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and so uh, people want cheap transactions uh, and they, they, they can't have that with Bitcoin so it makes it very easy for Bitcoin Cash to take the market. And, and for right now as well, I mean, we're talking about banking the unbanked, mm -hmm. you know, Bitcoin at its present form cannot serve those people in remote regions around the world well. Bitcoin Cash can, mm -hmm. um, to some degree. Mm -hmm. And again, even though you're concerned about centralization as a kind of theoretical discussion, mm -hmm. for people who are struggling and starving, they probably don't care about centralization of, of protocols, they just care about being able to use money. And so, mm -hmm. I think that does work in Bitcoin Cash's favor. Mm -hmm. But with Lightning, that might change, so mm -hmm. who knows? Yeah, yeah, indeed. Um, it might change, but uh, we will have to see. Huh? <laughs> we will. You have yeah. to come back to this at some point, maybe in the future. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Oh, very interesting, very interesting. So, um, thanks so much, Louis, uh, and and uh, for doing this interview and just for being part of the crypto world and uh, for having uh, given my channel so much exposure. I really uh, value that a lot, and uh, and thank you so much. And and thank you so much for for providing so much value to me and for helping teach me so many things. You've definitely shaped my opinion and my look on the market and so for that I can only thank you. The pleasure was all mine. <laughs> <laughs> Bye guys. Catch you later.